People say that if the victims of forcible feeding did not struggle, they would suffer less. I should like to say, once and for all, that this is the same as telling anyone they would suffer less if they did not jump if they got a cinder in the eye. The principle is the same. One struggles because the pain is excruciating, and the nerves of the eyes, ears and face so tortured that it would be impossible not to resist the process of torture to the uttermost. One struggles, also, because of another reason, a moral reason for forcible feeding is an immoral assault, as well as a painful physical one, and to remain passive under it would give one the feeling of sin, the sin of concurrence. Once whole nature is revolted, resistance is therefore inevitable. There is a violent struggle at first with eight or nine wardesses. Frequently, after being overcome by them, one is flung onto the floor and then picked up bodily and flung on the bed. Quickly, then each wardess seizes the part of your body allocated to her and three lie across your legs, almost breaking, it would seem, the tendons under the knees. Your shoes are removed and your ankles pinched in the nerve centres if you move your feet. There is a wardess holding each shoulder, two at each arm, two at the side, and these, if they wish, kneel on your ribs until your breathing shows a dangerous shortness. From all this pressure, when they desist, for a few moments to return to it later.